You look at the 10 year today, again, a move lower of about nine basis points. How do you dissect what from that trend is coming from just a haven bid versus an actual change in Fed discourse? Yeah, I think the latest moves are really interesting and it's important to dissect exactly what has happened because this year round the surge in bond yields, particularly following the summer months, has been driven um, much more by monetary policy expectations than by term premia. And we do think that generally the risk of holding uh, long-term treasury bonds, um, there still is some room for term premium to move higher given the uncertain fiscal policy outlook, also given the current um, uncertain um, outlook um, in the Middle East which could trigger cost pressures, inflationary um, pressures and also given the fact that the Fed so far has been engaging in quantitative tightening um, while U.S. issuance is high. But uh, nevertheless, when we dissect these two factors, there is more room to run on the term premium fund. However, when it comes to the monetary policy expectations, the high for longer environment has been priced following the summer months. And here the Fed dovish comments come into play and could motivate investors to turn into the longer term uh, bond market. And Catherine, good morning. It's Madison, New York. It's interesting. You chime with one of the most read stories, which is McCormick over at City saying, even though term premium has gone above zero, it's only at the bottom of the range. So do you expect a much bigger move? How, how much bigger a move do you expect in term premium before you would shift from your underweight long term US government bonds, which is a high conviction for you. So how much richer does it need to get before you will shift? Yeah, that's an important um, question, Manus. And I think we need to uh, differentiate here between our tactical position, our tactical long held underweight in US Treasuries, which has served us well given the rise yep. and surging uh, yields, and then the more strategic view. Um, given the more, more strategically, the term premium has more room to rise um, historically. Um, just based on historic moves, about 100 basis points or so could be within the realms of possibilities. However, then, more tactically, the focus seems to now be shifting more toward, uh, towards the Fed um, shifting tone. And this mm -hmm. could tactically mean that the next move is not doubling up the underweight mm -hmm. on the long end US studies. However, um, then rather going towards neutral. And let me also. Um, highlight that in European government bonds, so your area government bonds like 10-year bonds and also UK girls, right. we have become more constructive on duration uh, since summer. Huh. Okay. So in that environment, I just have to wonder how much potential upside is there when the data comes in? Because the Fed still, as they always say they have been, is data dependent. We're going to get CPI this week. Is there a big risk given positioning, given the volatility we've seen, that that could upset the apple cart once again? Yeah. So, um, it is important uh, to know that inflation has um, progressed this year, so some disinflation has been um, observed. However, this is resolving pandemic-related mismatches, uh, mismatches in services and product markets and also on the labor market. So, for example, on the labor market, what has been happening is uh, rehiring dynamics um, post-pandemic. So uh, looking forward into next year, we think that U.S. inflation could be put on a roller coaster mm. ride, given that um, US, um, uh, US, the U.S. working population is aging and uh, hence there might be some labor shortages coming to the forefront again. So we do see some more volatile and more persistent inflation picture that is currently priced, hence our view that the term mm. premium might rise. I, and I like that sort of uh, top line that you've got, which is hold on tight uh, because of this roller coaster in, in inflation that's going to come. What, what I really want to try and understand is what is it that drives the, the sort of the next swing, the second round effect? Is it the energy impact, which obviously war, we are now firmly at war and we don't know the duration of that? Or is it higher and more enduring structural inflation, as Larry Fink said to Danny a couple of weeks ago, it's embedded. And that's about wages, isn't it, Anne Catherine? Yes, so in the shorter term, it's exactly what you say, the um, energy costs, which could be related to a, another jump in um, oil prices, um, depending on how the tragic conflict evolves. But then longer term, what, what uh, really will put inflation at a higher level 
armor structural forces at play, which we also like to call mega forces. And one of them is demographics that I talked about already. Mm -hmm. So the U.S. Um, aging into um, Yes, work for, workforce aging into retirement. Another one is the low carbon transition, which will again, for a, on a longer term horizon, mean higher energy um, costs. And Catherine, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me this morning and Catherine Peterson there from BlackRock.